Nastic Monasty Generally, Nastic movements are reversible typically when pulvini are involved and thus not as growth phenomena. Many hyponastic and epinastic leaf movements involve growth, irreversible cell elongation, and they also appear to be reversible. It is triggered by external environment stimuli such as mechanical stress, touch and internal biological clock. The stimulus does not determine their direction. Nastic movements resulting from touch, thigmonasty, Greek, thigma is equal to touch, were long thought to occur in only a few species of the mimosoidae. Now we know that the phenomenon is more widespread. The most notable example is Mimosa pudica, a sensitive plant with doubly compound leaves with leaflet and pulvinar structures similar to Albizia. Upon being touched, shaken, heated, or treated with an electrical stimulus, its leaflets and leaves rapidly fold up. Only one leaflet needs to be stimulated. Some stimulus then moves throughout the plant. The advantages of this to the plant are uncertain, but one, not very appealing, idea is that the collapse of the leaflets startles away insects before they begin to eat the foliage. Leaflet movement is caused by water transport out of certain motor cells of the pulvinus. Again, an efflux of K** precedes water loss, at least in the main pulvinus at the base of each leaf. Two distinct mechanisms are as electrical and chemical. The electrical fluctuation is an action potential, a voltage change. Action potentials are similar to those in animal nerve cells but slower. The action potential will not pass through a pulvinus from one leaflet to another unless the chemical response is also elicited. In the case of mimosa, several leaflets fold up. Ubaldo Ricca, an Italian, first reported the chemical response in 1916. It is caused by a substance that moves through the xylem vessels along with the transpiration stream, it's known as Ricard's factor. Its movement elicits electrical responses that travel ahead of it in parenchyma cells from one leaflet to another. Rapidly transported wound signals have also been observed in pea tissues. It is useful to a plant for the excitation by an insect of one or more sensory hairs of the Venusa's flytrap, Dionia emicipula. Action potentials move into the bilobed leaf and cause the lobes to snap shut within a second. Acid growth hydrogen ions are rapidly pumped into the walls of cells on the outside of each leaf in response to the action potentials from the trigger hairs. The protons loosen the cell walls so rapidly that the tissue becomes flaccid so that cells quickly absorb water, causing the outside of each leaf to expand and the trap to snap shut. The tests of Williams and Bainet's hypothesis are a model of the scientific method in action. The outside cells expanded about 28%, but the inside cells did not change. The inside cells gradually expanded during the 10 hours of reopening, but there was no further change on the outside. Second, their hypothesis suggested that infiltrating the leaves with neutral buffers should neutralize the protons pumped out of the cells and prevent closing. Third, since hydrogen pumping requires much ATP, they predicted that the amount of ATP should drop rapidly in the tissues during closing. They found a drop of about 29% during closing. All their tests were positive, strongly suggesting acid growth. Mm -hmm.